So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to solve the Google Maths puzzle that they did a couple of years ago. So what they did was they had a billboard, this is what it looks like, and if you solved this puzzle, it took you to a web address, and then you solved another puzzle, uh, and then if you could solve both of them, then uh, you would be able to apply for a job. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, figure out how to actually solve both of those puzzles. So what the puzzle's asking you is... Uh, the first 10 digit prime found in consecutive digits of E. So what E is, is, is it's just a mathematical constant, just like pi. And what essentially this means is we just have to go through all the digits of E and find the first prime number that is 10 digits long. So to do that, obviously, we need to have a value of E. So what I did was uh, I'm, I created a file. It's just an empty file. And I'm going to paste in um, a value for E. It's just one I found on the internet. It's E to 500 decimal places. So if I just call the variable e and I make a string and paste the number in, this is the number itself. You can see it starts with 2.71, uh, so we presume the rest of it's correct as well. But what we're uh, interested in is everything after the decimal point, so we can actually just delete uh, the two dot because we're only interested in the numbers that come after the decimal point because that's where we're going to be searching for the prime number. So in order to find the prime number, the first thing we have to do is create a function that can actually find prime numbers. So uh, the way we do that is we're going to create a function that will determine whether or not a number is prime. The way we do that is we just create the function. Uh, we're going to call it ISP, and that's just short for is prime. We're going to pass it one parameter called oops, one parameter called n. That's the number we want to check. So what we want to do is we want to create a range from two, which is the smallest prime number, up until uh, the number we're actually checking. And what we want to do is divide the number we're checking by um, the number within the range. And then if at any point in that range we get a remainder that is equal to zero, as in uh, we get no remainder, that means the number isn't prime because it has more than two factors, itself and one. So the way we do that is we use Python's modulo operator, and that's going to, um, if that equals zero, that means the remainder is zero because the modulo operator is like divide, except instead of dividing the two numbers and giving you the result, it divides them and gives you the remainder. So we want the remainder to be zero, so we're going to divide them. So the way we do this is we use a for loop and we're going to create a variable called i, which is going to be uh, the, the uh, point within the range that we're currently at. So if we were checking 10 uh, to see if 10 was prime, uh, we would start at 2 and we go up to 10 uh, and then i would be equal to any number between 2 and 10 within the range. So we're going to set for i uh, in range, which is the Python range function. Uh, we're going to start on the number 2 and we're going to end on the number n. So now what we do is we say if n divided by i gives a remainder of 0, then we know the number is uh, not prime. So we say return false because the number isn't prime. Otherwise, if we get through the entire range, um, then outside the for loop, we'll return true, which means the number is prime. Because if we get the entire way through the for loop without returning um, false, then we uh, return true because obviously that means the number must be uh, prime. So we're going to test this. So we're just going to say we're going to print the result and we're going to print ISP. We're going to pass in a number that we know to be prime. So just 13, that is going to be prime. So this will return true. So we say python3 uh, g.py. You can see it returns true. Now if I uh, type in any even number, for example 20, we know that's not prime because it's an even number. And we run this, you can see it says false. So that's our prime number checker and that's the first step in uh, solving the maths puzzle. So the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, check uh, the number itself, E, and we need to check can we find the prime number. So what we're doing is we're looking for a number that's 10 digits long. So we're going to grab 10 digits out of E, uh, and then we're going to check them to see if they're prime. If they're not, then uh, since we started on the first number, then we're going to move to the next number and move to the next one. And we're going to move one digit at a time until we get um, until we find our prime number. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another for loop and we're going to set 4x in e. So e is our variable up here and x is going to be any specific character within it. So if I was to print x, what it will do is it will print every single character uh, with a new line after it. As you can see, that's what it did. So what we want to do is we want to get a block of characters uh, that are 10 characters long. So the way we do that is we say if e, and because Python strings are um, arrays of characters, we can use the array operator and we can use that to grab 10 uh, letters out of the string. So the way we do that is we say we start on 0 which is the first character and we go up to 10 which is the 10th character. And what we do is we, we uh, surround this in the function isp to check if the number is prime. 
But as you can see, A is a string, uh, and what we're doing here is getting a substring, which is still a string. So what we need to do is we need to convert it to an integer uh, to run it through our function, because our uh, function expects an integer. Uh, so there we have uh, the number passed to our function, and what we want to say is equals true. That means if the number is prime, then we uh, break out of the uh, for loop. Otherwise, we say e is equal to itself, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove the first 10 characters. So the way we do that is we say e is equal to itself, uh, except what we're going to do is we're going to start on the first index instead of the zeroth index. So that means instead of starting at 7, we're going to start on 1, and we're overriding the variable e each time, so we're actually shrinking it uh, its length. And we want to say it's equal to 1, and then we say colon, which means it goes to the end of the string. So what we've done is essentially just reduce the length of the string by removing the first character. Uh, and then what we say is, uh, after we've reduced the first character, we uh, check again, which is what happens when we run the for loop. So what we want to do then is, if we find the prime number, we want to print out uh, a string that says found it. Then we want to print the actual number. So we're going to print uh, e, and we're going to print uh, 0 to 10, which is the 10 digit prime number that we just found. So let's run this and see what happens. So this looks like we have an infinite loop, but we actually don't. Uh, if I just close that with control C, that'll just end the program. So what's actually happening there is uh, our function is finding the prime number, and what it's doing is it's checking the range from the number 2 up to the prime number. But if you see, if I grab 10 characters out of this uh, string, you can see that's the first 10 characters. And that's 10 digits, um, which means this number is actually 7,182,818,284. So what essentially this means is our for loop has to loop 7 billion times to get the entire way through that range. So when it actually finds the prime number, it's not actually frozen, it's just looping uh, essentially 7 billion times. What we can do is we can just print i. And if we run this again, what you'll see is this. You can see this is the loop actually happening happening in person. And you can see it's on about a million now, but that means it has another thousand uh, to go to get to 1 billion and another 7 times longer than that to get to 7 billion. So as you can see it takes ages uh, which is why it looks like we have an infinite loop when in fact we don't. So the way we can actually get our prime number is instead of saying if the result is true then print it out because this function doesn't actually get a chance to return yet because it has so many uh, loops to do. So what we could do to uh, solve this problem is we could either decrease the range, but that would mean that we couldn't be 100% certain that the prime number we found is actually the first one, because if we start the range too high, then um, we're not, we might not find the prime number early enough in the sequence, which means we could find a 10-digit prime number, but it wouldn't be the first one, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for the first 10-digit uh, prime number. So alternatively, what we can do is we can first just unprint that, and we can say if the result is false, Obviously we don't want to break out of it and say we found it because we didn't. So we just want to copy that and we paste it up here. And then we'll say else. So in other words, if it's true, then we'll break out of it obviously. And if it's false, we're going to print out the prime number. We're going to print out the uh, string e is equal to 0 to 10. So I actually take note of the fact that our print is below um, the string where you overwrite the uh, array of characters. The reason for that is because uh, since we're overriding them first, we're essentially just pushing a string along one, which means when we return, uh, when we print out the number, it's actually not the current number that's checked, it's the number after it. Uh, and because our function never returns when we get to our prime number, because it's so big, because we're printing the number that's uh, not actually being checked, we're printing the number after it, that means that when we get to our prime number, we don't actually have to wait for it to be checked. When we get to the massive infinite loop, we can actually just assume that that is our prime number, and the way we could check it is we just put it into uh, the web browser and see does it show up to the correct website. So if I run this now, you can see this number here is actually the number we were looking for all along. This is the prime number, the uh, first 10 digit prime number uh, in consecutive digits of E. And if we waited for our function uh, to return long enough, then it would actually return properly. So the next thing that happens when you go to the website, uh, this.com, which is what it tells you to do in the picture. So if we go over to here, you can see this is the second part of the puzzle. If we go to uh, our prime number.com, 
this is the web page we'll get. Uh, we get congratulations, you made it to level two. Go to uh, Linux.org and enter Bob's your uncle as the login and answer to the equation as your password. Uh, and as you can see, this uh, is just a list of the uh, same function and um, it returns different values. Uh, if we look at the, this fourth value, it is equal to the prime number that we just found. And if we actually just copy this value and we um, command F, we paste it in here, you can see this is um, the first 10 digits out of the um, after the decimal point in E. If we copy the next one, uh, this is another uh, set of 10 digits for me. Copy the next one, uh, you'll also probably be able to tell these are another 10 digits in E and our prime number that we found in the first part. If we copy and paste that, you can see that is another 10 digits of E. Um, what these 10 digits have, they have one thing in common and it is that they all add up to uh, 49. So the sum of the digits, if we add these all together, is uh, 49. So essentially what we're looking for is uh, we're looking for a set of 10 characters in the string that add together to equal uh, 49. Uh, and what we're looking for is characters that happen after this uh, fourth one. So if we just uh, paste this here, you can see. We're looking for characters from this nine onwards. We're looking for 10 characters that equal, uh, that would sum together equal 49. And that will be the answer to this equation. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to create another for loop to loop through the string, much the same way as we did earlier on. So we'll say for x in e, which will loop through every character in the string, is uh, four, and we'll just pick another character, say c in uh, e again. But what we're doing is we're going to look through a substring this time of e. So we're just going to say e, and then we're going to pick a substring, which is going to be zero to the tenth index. That will give us uh, our 10 uh, digits of numbers. Then what we're going to do is we're going to sum them all together. And before we can do that, we need to create a variable to hold them, to hold the uh, sum as we're adding it up. So we'll say s is equal to zero. So then we'll say uh, s is equal to int, and then c. c is going to be a character, um, and then we need to convert it from a string to an integer. That's what we're using the int function for. And we're going to say plus equals to uh, increase the value of s. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here outside the for loop, uh, but within the for loop, the above for loop, we're going to say if uh, s is equal to 49. What we're going to say is if s is equal to 49, then we're just going to print uh, e is equal to 0 to 10, which is the 10 digits of characters. And after that, uh, we're going to remove the first character of um, e each time. So we're going to say e is equal to itself minus the first character and that will uh, just push the string along so that we can actually um, find the uh, 10 digits we're looking for. So if we just run this, you can see here is a list of the numbers it found that all add up to 49 and if we just paste them in here, you can see this is the first number which is f equals 1, this is the second number f equals 2, third one f equals 3, fourth one f equals 4 and the fifth one which is the one we're looking for is this one here. So if I just remove the ones after that, this is equal to f equals 5. And that is the number we're looking for. So if, uh, obviously this website doesn't work anymore, but if we were to go to uh, linux.org, type in Bob's your uncle, and uh, paste in this as the password, it would have taken us to a page that would allow us to apply for a job. So hopefully you find this tutorial interesting. Uh, if you did, if you did, don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.